Remember when video games used to be as basic as Donkey Kong and Tetris? Tetris actually celebrating its 25th birthday. Well, we've gone from pixelated to picture perfect. These days, games are so realistic, you may question where reality ends and fantasy begins. The video game industry has grown tremendously. It's not just how we play, but how we live. Look around, you'll see every sort of game imaginable. Action games geared for men, games for the ladies, games for the kids, and games for the young at heart. More than ever before, gaming has become a part of everyday life in households around the country, and games are now more interactive than ever before. A place where the latest technology emerges and the seemingly impossible becomes truly imaginable. It's the annual Electronics Entertainment Expo. Welcome to E3 2009. Hello everyone and welcome to Los Angeles and one of the biggest gaming showcases in the world. The Electronic Entertainment Expo or E3 as it's commonly referred to. I'm Daniel Seberg, CBS News Science and Technology Correspondent. And I'm Natalie Del Conte from CNET. We're here at the GameSpot stage which is a division of CBS Interactive where our teams from CBS News, CNET and GameSpot have been hard at work covering the expo. Indeed E3 is where all of the big gaming trends are unveiled. This year, 41,000 media and industry insiders attended the show. It's not open to the public, but we're giving you special access by showing you the hottest hardware and software before it hits shelves. Indeed, over the next half hour, we'll give you an insider's look at the biggest breakthroughs and the latest trends in gaming technology. Plus, we'll let you know what's getting our GameSpot editors thumbs twitching, and we'll bring you some star power. Let's start things off by looking at one of the hottest trends this year, interactive gaming. CBS's Manuel Gallegas shows us that the future is all about getting gamers off the couch. There's some odd looking behavior on the E3 convention floor, squatting, swinging, running. These days, virtual reality has gamers breaking a sweat. Actually kind of working out a little bit, it looks yeah, like. Yeah, it, you know, it even, uh, shows you how many calories you burn. There's every kind of interactive game imaginable here at the E3 convention, from fantasy games to war games to mixing music. And the future of gaming is total body experience. The talk of the show comes from Microsoft. Its breakthrough Natal technology lets gamers use their entire body wirelessly, with no controls and no sensors attached. A camera scans the player for face and body recognition. It recognizes your facial expressions, your voice, and it tracks all of your body movements so that you can interact with the Xbox 360 without using a controller. Nintendo first got gamers off the couch with its wildly popular Wii. The next generation Wii offers up more physically challenging games, tennis or taekwondo. Sony is also revealing motion detection technology and more portability with bigger screens. Analysts say the multi-billion dollar video game industry is poised to eclipse all other forms of entertainment and the movie and music industries are jumping on board. The graphics are very good and uh, we were great. Gaming is becoming something that's more than just shooting the bad guys and running around. It's becoming something that wants to touch every aspect of everybody's life. The latest games look stunningly real. Even the actors are better looking. For gamers, the fantasy can be virtually more interesting than real life. Manuel Gallegas, CBS News, Los Angeles. I guess we're going to need some knee pads and helmets. Yeah, I was getting a little tired just watching some of that stuff, but it's all about getting you involved in the game. Seems a little dangerous, but all that gaming does translate into big bucks. Last year alone, the industry brought in close to $12 billion. Yes, even in this recession, gamers and game makers are finding that the video game industry is an economic bright spot. At GameStop stores from New York to Los Angeles, business is steady. Whether the games are used or new, sports or shoot 'em ups, or for parents or kids. Is it worth it to spend that much money on video games? Not to me, but to him it is. I did pretty well here. I mean, 60 bucks. Getting, um, 60 bucks and you got how many games? Like five games. Five games. So, I mean, it's gonna... That's hours of entertainment, right? Uh, yeah, and I'll even play them. So. <laughs> In fact, GameStop says its revenues are up 24% from $7.1 billion in 2007 to $8.8 .8 billion in 2008. 
We certainly think that the industry has been recession resistant. And that growth is reflected in many game makers too. Especially for one of the biggest stars, helping Nintendo lead console and software sales. While April was relatively slow, the maker of the Wii still dominated the month's top five sales of games. We find that even in these unprecedented economic times, one, people still want to be entertained. They want to be able to spend their entertainment dollar on something that they know is going to be fun for their friends, for their family, and Nintendo has great offerings. Every year since 1995, the video game industry has gathered to get the word out and showcase what's in the pipeline. But attendance here at E3 dwindled from a record 70,000 in 2005 to fewer than 6,000 people in 2008. This year, though, it's back up to 41,000. That's a way of the video game industry saying, hey, look, we're doing just fine. Uh, and in fact, we're going to be doing great when we get out of this recession. Very nice. As we mentioned at the top of the show, we're here at the GameSpot stage because that's where the editors and experts from GameSpot do what they do best. No other gaming website in the world has as many hits as GameSpot, which makes them the leader in gaming technology. All this week, the team of GameSpot writers and editors have been sending content to the web. Whether it's shoot 'em ups sports, or saving the princess, GameSpot has all the scoop. And when we come back, we'll have more from E3, including the never-ending Battle of the Sexes. We'll be back faster than you can say, Super Mario and Lara Croft. Welcome back to E3 2009, the country's largest electronic entertainment expo. Traditionally, video games have appealed more to the guys, but at this year's event, female gamers have broken that glass ceiling. In the past, video games have been all about the dudes. But look out, boys. At this year's E3 expo, the ladies came to play. Whether it's a movie or video game, I'd rather watch a video game. It's fun. It's so much action. I think a lot of times women are more um, attracted to more cooperative type play instead of having to engage in combat. Most of the female gender know color coordination is key to fashion. Yes, fashion has been brought to the world of games. Style Savvy is a new game that's coming out for Nintendo DS and Nintendo DSi, and it's a way for you to really find your inner fashionista. Of course, not all gals are about the girly games. I'll get in a room online with a bunch of guys and they're like, oh, a girl's here, a girl's here. Well, women are sometimes engaged by the same kind of games that guys are engaged with. There's a lot of women who like the physical, the fighting games, the, you know, basic martial arts games. And just like the novels women like to read, their games can involve a bit of drama. This is Women's Murder Club based on James Patterson's novels. These are very smart, confident women that are taking the lead role in this crime-solving adventure. Whether it's a game designed just for girls or girls playing games for everyone, sometimes us gals may have to cool it on the smack talk. But you get hit on less if you're good. Right, right, Because exactly. as soon as the game's over, they leave the lobby. They feel less masculine. You're not threatened by a girl gamer, though, right? No. Do girls even know how to trash talk, though? Watch yourself. Okay, well, forget Ms. Pac-Man. Since Pac-Man was in diapers, gaming has been mostly a male pastime. And here at the show, there's plenty of stuff around for us guys. Open up! Is there a difference between a guy game and a girl game? Well, <laughs> the guys are satisfied. They're getting all their games. It's right. the girls that really aren't getting the, you know, the same attention. But guys often want more, don't we? So the industry is certainly catering to the gaming desires of men everywhere. Just like you'd walk into your local video store and you'd see genres for all the big movies, you know, drama and comedy and horror, there's genres in video games that will appeal to different tastes. And maybe one of the biggest hits in that genre here at the show... It is a hardcore action, you know, kind of guy's game. ...is Modern Warfare 2. This is a sequel to Modern Warfare 1, where it picks up where the story left off from the previous game taking you to exotic locales all over the world. But if exotic cars are more your speed... Did I see a Ferrari there or a Lamborghini? There we go. Okay. okay. Forza Motorsport 3 makes its debut here, with new features designed to soften the blow for newbie drivers. I'll show you a feature of this game. Okay. You can rewind. And, like, correct your mistake. 
One man who made few mistakes in his career, soccer legend Pelé. This is a good opportunity to stay close to the new generation. He's part of a new game for the Wii that allows soccer players to use their hands. Clearly, no shortage of guy games, but the line between gender genres is truly blurring, while still remaining competitive between the sexes. So who's better, you or your husband? Oh, my husband, for sure. Okay. Well, you know, after all that, maybe it's time to call a truce? I'll think about it. Okay, well, when we come back, find out what our experts have to say about Nintendo, Microsoft, and Sony, the big three here at E3. Plus, the editor-in-chief at GameSpot takes two stars from a hit CBS television show on their own tour of E3. All that and more when we come back. Welcome back to Los Angeles and E3 2009, the biggest video game convention in the country. Now, three of the biggest gaming companies, Microsoft, Nintendo, and Sony, packed a punch at this year's show. I talked to three industry experts about what's going to be hot this year. So you're a fan of Nintendo, you cover Nintendo. What do you think about their offerings this year? Uh, Nintendo actually, I think, had one of their best showings at E3 in quite a long time. So they're bringing out two Mario games, one two-dimensional, one three-dimensional, a new Metroid game. So, and then they also, of course, you know, Nintendo's new agenda is to service a casual crowd, and they're doing plenty of that as well. What you can't argue is Nintendo's making a lot of money. Maybe two or three years, Nintendo will, they'll have to get with the current technology. You know, they're going to have to bring out higher-end machines to kind of keep up with all the HDTVs that Americans are buying. And how do you think the Nintendo DSi compares to the new Sony PSP Go? So, they're pretty comparable, but the thing is, what the DSi has, is a really strong name, right? The DS is really popular with the crowd, the mainstream crowd, the hardcore gamers. It's uh, one of the best selling systems worldwide. It sells better than some of the big consoles. So it's hard to compete with. I think software wise, Sony really is ahead of everybody else. Because they have the title. They do, I mean, and, and, they, and it looks good. I mean, the PS3 is the, pretty much the most powerful system that there is out there. It looks like you're watching a high def movie. So Sony has this game called MAG. 256 people fighting at the same time. It's like a real battle in your living room. And you're part of a squad, you're not Rambo. It's a realistic fighting game, and you have to be tactically right. So we've all been waiting for a price cut, though, with the PS3, and that doesn't seem to be happening. Do you think it will? Well, I, you know, I think they're in a position where they have this great stuff coming out. I don't think they're going to do a price cut now. You cover Microsoft. You're a fan of Microsoft. What do you think of their Xbox offerings? I think they have actually a really good lineup for late 2009 and early 2010. They uh, introduced some new features uh, for the Xbox and for Xbox Live. And they introduced some new technology that could actually have some revolutionary effects on the industry. So let's get to Natal. That's the big one. Right. Is it really going to work as well as it looked on stage? It's kind of hard to say. It's very early right now, and so it's, it's easy to make things look good in a press tech demo. But I've played a few of the game. What I've played of it, it works. Yeah. It actually does work like we saw on stage. It could be a game changer for Microsoft because it gives them access to the casual audience that they don't have right now. This actually has the potential to take it beyond gaming, so you could conceivably change channels with a swipe of your hand or raise or lower your volume. Where it can go from now, it's going to be really interesting yeah. to see. Natal was really the hottest thing at the conference. You tried it out. What did you think? Yeah, I got a chance to use it a little bit. It's very immersive. You become the controller uh, using your hands, your arms, your legs at times uh, to interact with these games. You know, it's Microsoft's way of extending the life of the Xbox 360 a little bit. Keep in mind, it could cost you know, as much as $150, $200. It's not going to be available in 2009. Nintendo and Sony trying to do the same thing. It's all about this motion capture and trying to get you to interact with the game and, of course, get you up off the couch. Although, I have to say, I don't love the name. It's a little too close to my own name. Maybe they named it after you. Probably not. <laughs> anyway, good investigative work, Daniel. Speaking of investigative work, Sean Murray and Brian Dietzen from the CBS hit show NCIS came to E3 to check out the latest and greatest in gaming technology. GameSpot's own Ricardo Torres took them on a tour, and you're invited along. Hey everybody, I'm Ricardo Torres. I'm editor-in-chief of GameSpot.com, and I am standing here right in the middle of E3, which is ground zero for gaming. 
You may not be able to get in here, but that's okay. We're gonna give you a tour right now. So before we go and have a look at all the games, I gotta show you my cohorts. I got Sean Murray and Brian Deason from NCIS. What's up, guys? How are you? Very anxious to see games, and we're very anxious to show them, so let's go. All right, we're at Activision, boys. You get to play one game. What is it? Call of Duty. Modern Warfare 2. So let's go right now. Awesome. The guy was right on top of you. <laughs> I think I just blew myself up, John. So this is the last plan of two. It's four player co so you guys are on the same team. Try to help each other out. I'll show you a trick. Go right over there. Oh, is this like a big neck type of thing? Where the, where's this guy at? He is the big red dot on the map right over there. <laughs> there you go. He seems kind of mad at you. Oh, I'm gonna use the harmonizer on this guy. What does that harmonizer do? It's kind of like an episode of NCIS. One of the biggest games at E3 is Beatles Rock Band. Now the boys think that they're just gonna get a chance to see it, but we have a surprise for them, so let's get them in the studio right now. Wow, look All at right. this. See? Beautiful. Pretty cool, right? Unbelievable. Awesome. Very nice. Well, you know you have to try it. I would love to try it. Which? I wanna hold your hand? I wanna hold it's your snappy. hand. It's snappy. Oh, I'm uh. stuck. <laughs> I can fit this all in my uh, living room, right? All right, well, let's awesome. get you out of here because there's you know, all kinds of stuff for you guys to do. Go. And joining us when we come back is Ricardo Torres himself, GameSpot's editor-in-chief. He's going to give us the skinny on E3, and you're not going to want to miss what Ricardo has to say. our special E3 coverage here in Los Angeles. Joining us right now is Ricardo Torres, Editor-in-Chief at GameSpot. Ricardo, first a big shout out. Thanks for letting us use your set. Thanks for coming by. All right, and, and thanks for joining us right now. Mm -hmm. First question, I'm gonna put you on the spot, the GameSpot as it were. If you had to pick just one game here at the show that really stood out for you, what would it be? I know there are hundreds uh, to choose from. Uh, wow, well, I'd probably go, off the top of my head, it's gotta be God of War 3. It's the latest entry in the series, the first on PlayStation 3. You know, it's set in mythological times, you're going around, you're killing all these mythological creatures in really crazy ways. It's a lot, it's a lot of brutal fun. After a long, hard day, you just want to go and just tear stuff up. You and I were talking earlier about some of Nintendo's games. They're bringing back Mario in a big way. Four player, Super Mario, yes. a sequel, another Super yes. Mario game coming out? So if there's one story for Nintendo at E3, it's that Mario is back in like, a ton of different ways. So there's new Super Mario Brothers for the Wii, which is the Mario Brothers that you know. You're just running across, you know, from one side to, to the other on the screen, jumping on things. But now the big twist is you can play with three other friends. So it's full four player, you know, on the couch. It's not online. Uh, and it's a lot of fun because there's new suits. There's a penguin suit. You can freeze objects. There's a propeller suit so you can fly. But at the very core of it, it's Mario Brothers. And it's what everybody knows and everybody grew up with. Now, what do you see as a trend here? I mean, a lot of uh, devices to interact with the consoles, Microsoft, Natal, Sony had a similar product announced here, Nintendo's Wii Motion Plus. Is that where games are going right now? I think what you're seeing is everybody's trying to figure out how you get like that mainstream player that's not necessarily gonna go out and wait in line for a game. You know, maybe people that haven't been playing games all their whole lives but are sort of curious but still intimidated. You know, the Wii was a great way to introduce those people into video games because it was very simple, very intuitive, didn't take too much, you know, it, it didn't take too much skill really uh, to, to pick it up and play their games. But now everybody wants a piece of that. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Ricardo. We appreciate it. Thank you. Now, whether you've been to E3 or just admired it from afar, one of the most <laughs> fascinating elements is how the cast of characters appear to come to life and not just the ones from the video games. They do seem to be everywhere. And we caught up with some of these E3 icons and models and saw a whole other side to game playing. This is Will from Dark 
start, Boyd. How are you doing? Strong, silent type. Okay, um, can I hold the gun? So, what is your name? I'm Cassie with the agency. It's a code name. That's actually a pretty realistic looking gun. Oh, it's broken now. Oh. So, you're the Ninja Turtles, right? Uh, close. Same decade, but uh, we're the Ghostbusters from Dallas. We're not actually in the game, we're just nurses, so, yeah. yeah. May I ask what's in the syringe there? Oh, it's like our love plus <laughs> compassion love. and dedication to our team, trauma team. There's a lot of hot chicks running around to try and find you. Hot video gamers. Wow. Such great environment. So hot, <laughs> I'm sensing a little bit of sarcasm. <laughs> no, Just a, a hint. Are you the Ghostbusters? Do you get sick of guys coming up and taking your picture? Um, no, I don't get sick of that. I get sick of guys who don't shower. But besides that, it's great. I love it. Don't worry, I'll save you. From the people or the dragon? Both. Well, there you have it. What an experience it's been. We hope you've enjoyed this look at the best in gaming technology for 2009 and beyond. We've covered a lot today. If you want more information about the latest and greatest in gaming technology, as well as information about what's coming next, visit our website, cbsnews.com, gamespot.com, or cnet.com. I'm Natalie Del Conte from CNET. And I'm Daniel Seberg from CBS News. Thanks for joining us at E3, the Electronic Entertainment Expo. The E3 Electronics Entertainment Expo of 2009 is a special presentation of the CBS television stations.